you're looking to dive into topics on how to live a happier, healthier, more fit, and long lifespan, then you've come to the right podcast. Living the dream with me, Coach Damian Evans. Together, we will explore the topics on all things health, fitness, and wellness. Together, we will be lifelong learners on this journey to living the ultimate dream. What up, Dream Team? Coach D here coming at you with a bite-sized brain snack. These episodes were inspired because of our obsession with snacks. We love to fuel our bodies with these little bite-sized nutritious foods, and we've also talked about adding movement snacks into our day the same way. So we have food and we have movement covered, but what about our brains? It's time to add some little bite-sized brain snacks into your week. That's what these episodes will be all about, bite-sized wellness wisdom for lifelong learners. So let's open up and satiate our minds. This brain snack is all about something that's going to make you want to lace up those sneakers and head for the great outdoors. We will be talking about the incredible, the invigorating, the life-transforming benefits of exercise outside. Picture this, a radiant sun lighting up the sky, the gentle breeze whispering through the trees, and the sound of your own heartbeat sinking with the rhythm of nature. It's not just a workout. It's an adventure, but why should you trade the indoor gym, that beautiful air conditioning, for the open air? Well, stay tuned because today we're going to reveal the secrets behind why working up a sweat in the wild can be a game changer for your fitness journey, also your mental well-being, as well as your overall quality of life. We're going to cover some information shared by author and researcher Michael Easter, who wrote one of my favorite books of all time, The Comfort Crisis, and is currently launching his new book, The Scarcity Brain. And if you find today's episode interesting, I highly recommend checking out Michael Easter's newsletter. It's very well done and ranges on a wide variety of health topics. Let's see what he shared about the science and joy of outdoor workouts. In short, our ancestors evolved to do high levels of physically and mentally demanding activities outdoors. And that still matters today. David Racklin, an anthropologist at the University of Southern California, he has a traditional lab at the university, but most of his work occurs in the field, in far off places, working with some of the last remaining hunter gatherers. Racklin asks big questions about exercise, like how did exercise shape early human beings, and how can that guide us today? He says that humans split off from chimps and began hunting and gathering somewhere between 13 and 4 million years ago. And yes, I realized that in between 13 and 4 million years ago is a ludicrous range, but cooking up a species that takes over the world and invents amazing technology like spaceships, iPhones, and Pop-Tarts, Well, that just takes time. Our role as hunter-gatherers changed and it has shaped us. Our chimp predecessors were relatively lazy. Humans, on the other hand, had to be extremely active to survive. Our bodies adapted to the higher level of physical activity to maintain the health of all our organ systems, not just our heart and lungs and muscles, but everything, especially our brains. Hunting and gathering are not only physical acts, but they are also cognitive acts. As people hunt and gather, they're not just covering ground and carrying stuff. They're also running all sorts of calculations in their head. For example, figuring out how they should pace themselves in the heat, determining when to dial up and also back off from their effort during a pursuit. Noticing details in the environment like disturbed ground or a bent branch to track a certain animal. Reading and even smelling the land to determine where food could be. And also building a mental map of where they are in this vast landscape. And this mental work, it still matters today. When you combine physical acts with cognitive acts, it tends to have a really beneficial effect on the brain. It's like one reason that people who exercise outside more tend to age far better. 
For example, old Hadza tribe members, which the Hadza tribe is one of the few remaining hunter-gatherer tribes that are still around today, older Hadza tribe members, they still contribute food and resources to their tribe. And they also age very successfully, Racklin says. They often have the same level of physical activity in their 70s as they did in their 30s. The average Hatsa walks five and a half to 10 miles a day over rough ground as they hunt and gather. They don't seem to get age-related brain and physical diseases either, like dementia or like heart disease. And the sort of problem with indoor exercise is, is that indoor exercise lacks many of the extra benefits that we can get from exercising outdoor. To understand why outdoor exercise often trumps indoor exercise, we have to consider what exercise indoors is like. So think about running or rucking or walking on a treadmill. We stand on the belt and we set the television to our favorite show and then we punch in the exact speed and the exact incline that we want to go and then we can kind of just zone out because the exercise is the exact same from the first second to the last. And this happens in a setting where all the variables are controlled. It's predictable. It's temperature controlled. And as far as exercise goes, it's comfortable. This exercise is convenient and it works our cardiovascular system. And that, that's fantastic. But the missing link goes back to the work we must do between our ears. Your brain on outdoor exercise is different. In short, exercising outdoors is more, far more mentally demanding, which may improve your brain health as we age. If we go a little more in depth on this, it's very obvious that few of us are tracking animals nowadays or looking for a good place to dig up food. And this is especially as we work out. We're just not doing that anymore. But think of it like this. If running on a treadmill is like addition and subtraction when it comes to math, addition and subtraction, the way that humans evolve to exercise is more like a high level of multivariable calculus. Still today, outdoor exercise is closer to multivariable calculus than it is to addition if we were to still work out outside. Michael Easter frequently likes to reference his experience running in the Mojave Desert. He posts on his social media all the time. He does trails near his home and he runs around. He posts weekly videos of him running trails with his workout buddy, Stockton, his adorable dog. And he says, as I run, the rocky ground forces me to play something like moving Tetris with my feet. Each step that I take, I must quickly angle and land my feet in slits of flat ground between serrated rocks, pivot on loose dirt, sidestep spiny cacti, or even hurdle tiny little cracks and cliffs. And if he zones out, he'll be hobbling home on a twisted ankle, or he'll be eating rocks face first from a fall. That's not very great for longevity or for brain health. Each step is a new encounter, and nothing is pre-programmed. The trails can be like a roller coaster with ups and downs and long winding ascents and descents. And he has to quickly consider many variables, things like, how should I pace myself? Should I hammer up this hill or is that going to lead me to a bonk later on? If I bomb down this downhill section, how should I position my body in space and pace myself relative to the slope of this hill, given that it's covered in loose dirt? Are those rocks that I need to run up sharp enough to cut into my shoes? And should I go around them? How should I angle my foot as I run through this patch of rocks? Are there agave or cactus hanging onto the trail that could cut me? He says he comes home bloody half the time. And how about exposure to the elements? Until late September, the Mojave Desert is hot in the sense that the surface of the sun is hot. He has to leave home early. Hunter-gatherers time their gathering to sun exposure as well. And he also has to calculate water usage and alter his pace based on how much sun exposure he's getting. He even has to decide what trail he's going to go on based on the sun's location. 
So yes, it's much more cognitively demanding than indoor exercise, but also more physically demanding. Covering rough ground burns 28% more calories compared to roads, according to one study. Michael talks about how on the first truly hot day of the spring, he has a moment of feeling totally spent. He decides to run a desert trail that he hadn't run in a year, and he forgot just how gnarly this trail was. It was only eight miles, which that's a distance that he regularly runs on the trail with, with average effort. But this eight miles includes far more up and down and runs atop a jagged ancient seabed. And just the amount of effort packed into that eight miles, he said it felt like 20 miles on a treadmill. And science suggests his notion isn't entirely wrong. The rough, unpredictable ground also challenges our bodies more. Biomechanists at the University of Michigan discovered that an increasing challenge of walking or running on rough, uneven ground, it leads people to burn 28% more energy per step. That bears repeating again, 28%. That's not insignificant. Of course, the figure is a generality, a tame and flat trail would likely out edge a treadmill by maybe 10%. But then again, a very challenging up and down trail like the one he was just talking about, that might push us to burn perhaps 50% more calories per step. And it requires more strength, thanks to the steeper climbs and descents and more obstacles. We do much more physical work per distance on a trail as compared to indoors. And Yes, the actual numbers depend on how gnarly or how tame the trail is. Research shows that outdoor exercise is better for your mental health as well. We all know that exercise is great for your mental health, but outdoor exercise in studies have been proven to be better for your mental health. Scientists in the UK recently analyzed 26 different studies on how exercise in nature compares to exercise in a city or indoors. And their takeaway was physical activity undertaken outdoors in natural environments is more beneficial for a range of psychological outcomes compared with urban environments. They discovered that exercise in nature led to a greater increase in happiness and in energy and bigger decreases in anxiety, fatigue, and feelings of, quote, hostility. Hostility is for sure a strange scientific measure, but yeah, if you have ever done a hard outdoor workout, I bet you probably did feel a little less hostile afterwards. So how can we use this information? I realize it's hard for some people to access nature. Not everyone has that ability to, especially if you don't live in beautiful, sunny San Diego. And if that's you and you feel chained to the treadmill or you can only ruck in a big bustling city, that's totally fine. Again, all exercise is great. This topic isn't a bad, good, best thing. It's more like, it's more like this. Great, any exercise at all indoors or outdoors, greater exercise outdoors, and then greatest exercise in wild nature on a trail. For example, those researchers in the UK found that exercising in a city park also gave people more benefits than their indoor gym. Even just 15 minutes helped. So if you have the opportunity at all to do more exercise in nature, you should absolutely take it. Michael has been trying to get people on social media to once a week, quote unquote, empty their tanks. And he does this with one trail run. He does it every Sunday. And then he also wears a ruck when he takes his dogs out into the desert. So he tries to go one long run. He empties the tank one time a week. And he's trying to start that on social media, which I love the idea. And this can also bring us to our next topic on utilizing one of my new favorite forms of cardiovascular training, which is called rucking or also carrying weight, usually at lower speeds. Rucking is a physically demanding and rewarding outdoor activity that combines elements of hiking and fitness training. At its core, rucking involves carrying a weighted backpack known as a rucksack or simply a ruck, while walking on various terrains. The term ruck is derived from rucksack, which is a military backpack. Here's a breakdown of what rucking entails. 
the rucksack. A person wears a backpack filled with weights, typically in the form of maybe weight plates or sandbags or other heavy items. The weight adds resistance to your walk, making it more challenging and therefore more effective for building strength and also endurance. Walking or hiking, rucking can be done on various surfaces from paved roads and trails to rough, uneven terrain. It's essentially walking or hiking, but with the added challenge of carrying the ruck on your back. Distance and time. Rucking can be adapted to different fitness levels and goals. You can choose the distance and the duration that suits your current fitness level, whether it's a short ruck for a few miles with a very light weight, or maybe it's an extended hike covering many miles with heavier weight that you've earned your way to get there over several hours. I have some clients that are taking like 17,000 to 20,000 steps, trying to really get their movement in, and they just don't think that they can get any more steps in, but they still want to progress and advance, and maybe they just aren't getting their weight loss goals that they're looking for. Well, a great, great resolution here is to, instead of adding more time and adding more steps, to add load and do some rucking here. Maybe you do 10 minutes a day instead of all of that walking that you do with all those steps, maybe 10 minutes of those walking hours goes to rucking. Also, uh, benefits. Rucking offers several benefits. It's an excellent cardiovascular workout that burns calories and it improves endurance. It also builds muscular strength, which is so important, especially in the legs, the back, and the core. Rucking is a weight-bearing activity, which can be so good for bone density. Plus, being outdoors and enjoying nature adds an element of stress relief and mental well-being. This is where you can combine the best of both worlds. For those who love running but don't want to run away all of their muscle mass, rucking could be the answer for you. Equipment. While you can start with any sturdy backpack and just add some weights to it, there are some specialized rucking backpacks that are designed for comfort and stability during long walks. And it's important to choose the appropriate footwear too to support your feet during this activity. In summary, rucking is a physically demanding outdoor exercise that involves walking or hiking with a weighted backpack and it offers a full body workout. It's highly adaptable to different fitness levels and you can do this with someone that's not your current fitness level. So maybe you are with someone that's a little more deconditioned than you. They could have a lighter backpack and do the same exact thing that you're doing and you could level up, increase the weight in your bag and you could be on the same page doing the same thing, which is amazing. Rucking allows all the participants that do it to enjoy the benefits of outdoor activity while building strength and getting your endurance and your cardiovascular training up, as well as the camaraderie of having fellow ruckers with you and enjoying that hard, challenging exercise. And that's not all. Rucking can also help improve back pain issues. Under most loads a normal person would use, rucking may help back injuries. In 1984, two biomechanists at the University of Waterloo measured how back muscles activate when people wear a rucksack. They got a small group of men and had them toss on a 42-pound ruck, which is actually pretty heavy. Then they used EMGs, which measure muscle activity. The findings were a little counterintuitive. The scientists found that the erector spinae muscles, the muscles that erect your posture on your back, those erector spinae muscles, they were activated less while rucking compared to walking, which is interesting. Another study found the same exact thing until people went over 66 to 88 pounds, which probably not a load that I'd recommend for most rucks. That would be a very heavy load for most people to use on the regular for any good amount of distance. So clearly, rucking is more physically demanding than unloaded walking, but something had to make up for this lack of activation from the back muscles. The answer? Your abs, your core, your front core pick up the slack. Those army scientists explain that when you toss on a ruck and you lean slightly forward, to counter the weight of the bag, it reduces the torque on your lower back, but likely increases tension on your abs, measured by an ab EMG. Most everyday people who sit all day long, they have weak 
core muscles. So if you sit a lot, your front core muscles are probably a little weak. This may be one reason why leading back experts that I follow, like Stu McGill, remarked why rucking can be great for back health. Reducing torque on the low back and giving the spine some motion tends to do good things for back problems. The spine tends to like gentle motion, and there's no such thing as a common treatment for everyone. However, on, on average, people's discs of their spine and just their spines in general enjoy a, a little bit of motion. One of Stu McGill's recommended therapies for people recovering from posterior disc bulges, which is the backside of the disc bulges, was to put a load in their backpack and carry the load. Only 20 to 25 pounds placed low in the backpack and close to their back, but still a little bit of load low on the back and close to their back helped with this back pain or these disc bulges. And core strength is associated with less risk of back injury. For me, I love hip belts on my backpack or my ruck. A little hip belt, it, it's amazing for comfortableness and the hip belt tightens the bag to my body and it allows me to shift more of my weight from my back and my core to my hips, which helps me to go a little bit longer. So there's different kinds of rucksacks and different kinds of backpacks, but I really do prefer one that kind of has one of those hip belts that you can kind of lock yourself in. And that you carry weight is far more important on how you carry weight. So ruck any way that you can. Yes, people love weight vests. I've seen so many people out there wearing weight vests when they work out. Weight vests work too, but if you want a cheap, convenient, multi-purposed method of carrying weight that works for most people most of the time, no matter how far you go, then rucking is going to win the battle of the head-to-heads with weight vests and rucks. And I can send you an article that Michael Easter did. It was a long article that did a head-to-head comparison on rucksacks and weight vests. So if that's something you're interested, let me know. I can send you that. Rucking has more health and fitness and practical advantages compared to using a vest. But use a vest if you want to use a vest. That you carry weight is far more important than how you carry weight. So to recap the benefits of rucking, particularly in relation to muscle mass and to bone density and to how it differs from, let's say, steady state cardio like running or biking, when it comes to muscle mass, strength and endurance, boom, rucking requires you to carry a weighted backpack which adds resistance to your walk. This resistance challenges your muscles, especially those in your legs, your back, your core, And all of those things have to work harder. And over time, this is going to lead to a significant improvement in muscular strength and endurance. Also, just your functional fitness. Unlike some forms of steady state cardio, which primarily target cardiovascular fitness and and it only makes you good at one thing, one movement, rucking engages multiple muscle groups simultaneously. This functional aspect of rucking can enhance overall muscle balance, your coordination, and it's just going to make it a a more well-rounded exercise. And then minimal impact. Running is high impact. Rucking is a very low impact exercise, meaning that it puts less stress on your joints compared to activities that have higher impact. This reduced impact is particularly beneficial for individuals with joint issues or those who want to preserve their muscle mass without the potential wear and tear associated with high impact Uh, long steady state cardio activities. When it comes to bone density, weight bearing exercises have the win. So rucking is a weight bearing activity, which means that your body supports the weight of both itself and the added load of the backpack. Weight bearing exercises are known to stimulate bone remodeling and increase bone density. That's huge. This is especially important for preventing osteoporosis and maintaining bone health, particularly as we age. And then the varied terrain, rucking often involves walking over a variety of terrains from grassy trails to uneven services to mountains, hills, valleys, and these variations in terrain can provide additional benefits for bone density as your body must constantly adapt to different ground forces and balance challenges. Compared to steady state cardio like running, while steady state cardio exercises like running offer their own set of benefits, they can have drawbacks when it comes to muscle mass and bone density. 
Muscle mass loss in cardio, like running, long duration steady state cardio can lead to muscle loss over time. This is just proven over and over again. Think about what the best long distance runner looks like. Very thin, very little muscle mass, as efficient as a running machine as it can possibly be. This is especially true if you're in a calorie deficit, which is very common for those trying to lose weight. So if you want to lose weight, you cut your calories down and you go running, you are going to lose muscle mass. It's almost, it's going to happen. And especially if you're not engaging in strength training, the body may start breaking down muscle for energy during prolonged aerobic exercises like running. And you need that muscle mass, especially as we get older. Also, it's less weight bearing running, although an excellent cardiovascular workout, it has its place. It just does not provide the same level of resistance and weight bearing as carrying a loaded backpack and consequently running. It's may not stimulate bone density improvements to the same extent. In contrast, rucking offers a unique blend of both cardiovascular exercise, also strength training and weight bearing activity. That's a huge trifecta right there. This combination helps maintain or even increase muscle mass while supporting bone health, especially if your calories are in the right place and you're getting an adequate amount of protein, which we've talked about many times. It's a valuable option for individuals looking to enjoy the benefits of cardio exercise while also minimizing the risk of muscle loss and maximizing bone density, making it a great choice for long-term health and fitness goals. And remember, if you can do it outside, in nature, now we're really talking about a combination for better cognition, vitality, longevity, and enhanced mood and overall health. And that's it, my friends, for this bite-sized brain snack. Share the knowledge that you gained with your friends and family and hold each other accountable. If you enjoy this content, it helps a ton if you could post on your social media stories a screenshot of this episode. And maybe include one takeaway that you learned and make sure that you tag me and share your journey. Tag me at live in the dream underscore podcast or at coach Damien underscore SD. And let us know how this episode benefited you. Let us know what we missed. Let us know what we got wrong. Tell us how you enjoy your outdoor exercise time or what experience you've had with rucking. We want to know. Message us if you have any suggestions or tips that would help your live in the dream team that we could discuss in future episodes. I will be right here with you working on making a stronger, happier, and healthier humans. Until next time, friends, keep living the dream.